I want you to take a moment and think about this. How often do you find yourself holding on to something you did in the past, something that keeps replaying in your mind? It could be a mistake you made last year, 10 years ago, or even when you were just a child. You see, it's strange how easily we forgive other people. Someone hurts us, apologizes, and most of the time we let it go. But when it comes to forgiving ourselves, somehow we become our own harshest critics. I remember a story from years ago. A friend of mine, a wonderful person, once told me how he couldn't forgive himself for a mistake he made at work. He felt responsible for a decision that went wrong and it cost the company a lot of money. No one blamed him for it. The company didn't collapse and life moved on for everyone else, but not for him. For months he carried this weight. It wasn't something other people could see, but it was there in every decision he made. He kept revisiting that moment, punishing himself over and over again, long after everyone else had forgotten about it. Have you ever been there? Have you ever found yourself stuck in a moment that's long past, unable to let it go, even though the world has already moved on? It's a place that many of us know all too well. We get stuck in regret, replaying our mistakes in our minds like a broken record. And every time we replay it, the guilt gets heavier, the shame more consuming, until we start to believe that we are defined by our worst moments. But may I ask you something? What purpose does holding onto that regret serve? Does it help? Does it change anything? Does it make you a better person? Or does it keep you locked in the past, unable to grow and move forward? Carrying around guilt and shame is like walking through life with a heavy backpack full of rocks. And every time you refuse to forgive yourself, you're adding another rock to that pack. You don't realize it at first, but over time, that weight starts to slow you down. It affects the way you see the world, the way you see yourself, and even the way you treat the people around you. And here's the thing, no one is asking you to carry that weight. No one is keeping you trapped in your mistakes except you. We live in a society that often teaches us to be hard on ourselves to believe that perfection is the only, but perfection isn't real. Mistakes are part of being human. They're part of living, part of growing, and yet we act as if making a mistake means we're unworthy of love, forgiveness, or happiness. The truth is forgiveness, especially self-forgiveness, is the key to unlocking the peace we all crave. Because as long as you hold on to regret, you are living in the past. And living in the past doesn't leave room for the present for what could be. Think about it this way. You wouldn't drive your car while staring only in the rearview mirror, would you? If you did, you'd crash in no time. Yet, this is exactly what so many of us do in our own lives. We keep looking back. We keep focusing on what's behind us instead of looking forward at the road ahead. And that's how we end up missing out on what's happening right now today. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but I deserve to feel guilty. I made that mistake and I have to live with the consequences. Yes, it's true. Every action has consequences, but punishing yourself endlessly doesn't change what happened. All it does is keep you stuck. The real question isn't whether you made a mistake. The real question is, have you learned from it? Because that's what mistakes are for. They're lessons, opportunities to grow, to become better, to evolve. So why do we find it so hard to forgive ourselves? I think deep down we're afraid. Afraid that if we let go of the guilt, if we forgive ourselves, it means we're letting ourselves off the hook, that we're not taking responsibility. But forgiving yourself isn't about ignoring what happened. It's about acknowledging it learning from it, and then releasing the hold it has on you. Because as long as you hold on to guilt, you're not living freely. You're living chained to a past that you can't change. The reality is self-forgiveness is not only an act of kindness, it's an act of courage. It takes courage to face your mistakes, to accept that you're imperfect, and to decide that you're still worthy of love and peace. When you forgive yourself, you're not erasing what happened. You're simply choosing to so let's start asking a different question. Instead of asking, why did I do that? Or how could I have been so wrong? Try asking yourself this. What can I learn from this? How can I use this experience to become better, wiser, more compassionate? That shift in perspective is where self-forgiveness begins. It's not about erasing the past. It's about transforming it into something that serves you rather than something that holds you back. 
And when you do that, when you forgive yourself, something incredible happens. You start to feel lighter. The world looks different. You begin to realize that your mistakes don't define you. What defines you is how you rise after you fall, how you keep moving forward despite the setbacks. So as you leave here today, I want you to think about that one thing. Maybe it's something you did last week. Maybe it's something you've been carrying for years that you've struggled to forgive yourself for. And I want you to imagine what your life would feel like if you finally let it go. What would you do differently? How would you feel? Who would you become? Regret. What a powerful word, isn't it? It's something that all of us have felt at some point in our lives. Maybe it's a choice you made that you wish you hadn't or an opportunity you let slip by. Maybe it's something you said in the heat of the moment or something. You didn't say when you should have. Regret can take many forms, but at its core, it's the feeling that somehow we got it wrong. But what is regret, really? It's not just the memory of something we wish had gone differently. Regret is deeper than that. It's that gnawing sensation that keeps us tied to the past, replaying events over and over again in our minds, wondering, what if? What if I had chosen another path? What if I had spoken up? What if I hadn't let fear stop me? Regret has a way of clinging to us, doesn't it? We think we've moved on, and then suddenly something triggers a memory, a sound, a smell, a random thought, and that regret comes rushing back like it happened yesterday. Why does it have such a tight grip on us? Why is it so difficult to shake off? What does regret actually give us? Think about that for a moment. Is regret serving you in any meaningful way? Does it change the past? Does it help you move forward? Or is it simply a weight, something that keeps pulling you back into a place you can't change? You see, regret is a tricky thing. On the surface, we might think it's useful. We believe that if we hold on to it, we're somehow holding ourselves accountable. We're convincing ourselves that by feeling bad enough, we're making up for the mistake. But regret doesn't work that way. It doesn't offer us any real solutions. It doesn't move us forward. It keeps us stuck, forever tied to a moment that no longer exists. Regret is tied to one place, the past. And the past is a place we cannot live in. We can visit it in our minds, sure, but no matter how hard we try, we cannot change it. It's like trying to rewrite a book that's already been published. The words are on the page. The ink is dry. What's done is done. Even though we know we can't change the past, we still let regret take up so much space in our present. And that's the real tragedy of regret. It doesn't just live in the past. It follows us into the present, coloring everything we do. It affects how we see ourselves, how we make decisions, and how we interact with the people around us. Think about it. How many times have you hesitated to take a risk or to make a bold choice because you were afraid of making another mistake? How many opportunities have you passed up because you were still carrying the regret of something that happened long ago? Regret doesn't just keep us in the past. It, it keeps us from fully living in the present. Now, I want you to consider something else. What if regret, instead of being something that holds us down, could be seen as a signal? A signal that we have an opportunity to learn, to grow, to make different choices in the future. What if, instead of feeling bad about what we did or didn't do, we used regret as a tool for... So let's shift the focus. Instead of striving for perfection, let's strive for growth. Let's strive to be kind to ourselves when we fall short, to forgive ourselves when we make mistakes, and to see those mistakes not as failures, but as opportunities to learn and grow. Because the truth is, you are worthy of forgiveness, not because you're perfect, but because you're human. And being human means being imperfect. It means making mistakes, learning from them, and then having the courage to move forward, knowing that you're always doing the best you can. So the next time you find yourself caught in the trap of perfectionism, I want you to pause and ask yourself, would I hold someone else to this same standard? Would I expect someone else to be perfect? If the answer is no, then why are you expecting it from yourself? Forgiveness, true forgiveness, is rooted in compassion. And that begins with being compassionate toward yourself. Because when you forgive yourself, you're not saying that you'll never make another mistake. You're saying that you accept yourself, laws and all. 
You're giving yourself permission to be imperfect, and in doing so, you're giving yourself the freedom to live, to grow, and to be at peace. Holding on to the past, to the things we uh, wish we could change, to the mistakes we've made. It's like carrying around a heavy suitcase full of old clothes we never wear. You know what I mean? It takes up space in our lives, weighs us down, and leaves little room for any new to come in. Yet we hold on to it, believing that somehow it serves us. But let me ask you this. If you had a friend who spoke to you the way your inner critic does, how long would you keep them around? That voice in your head. The one that keeps reminding you of your mistakes, telling you what you should have done differently, criticizing every move you make, is relentless, isn't it? It keeps you tied to the past, replaying the same stories over and over again. But here's the thing. That inner critic is not helping you. It's draining your energy. It's limiting your growth. Imagine trying to drive a car forward while constantly looking in the rear view mirror. It doesn't work, does it? Eventually, you're going to crash. The past is gone. It's over. No amount of dwelling on it, regretting it, or wishing it had been different will ever change that. But what will change is how much energy you have to move forward, how much room you have to grow, and how much freedom you have to create the life you want if you let go of it. We've all made mistakes. That's part of being human. But the problem is we tend to treat our mistakes like life sentences. We carry them around with us, letting them define who we are, and worse, letting them determine what we believe we deserve. We say things like, I'll never be able to forgive myself for that, or I don't deserve to be happy after what I've done. But let me tell you, Mistakes are not life sentences. They're lessons. And until we reframe them as such, we'll stay trapped in the past, unable to move forward. What you think about this? If you could go back and change one mistake, would it change who you are today? It might seem like it would, but the reality is every experience, good or bad, shapes us. Every mistake teaches us something. Without those missteps, we wouldn't have the insights we do now. We wouldn't have the same compassion, the same depth, the same understanding. The things we regret the most are often the things that teach us the most. They challenge us, they push us to grow, and they give us the opportunity to become better versions of ourselves. So why do we hold on to the past like it's a punishment? Why do we let it drain our energy and limit our potential? We think that by holding on, by refusing to forgive ourselves, we're somehow making amends. We think that guilt is a way of holding ourselves accountable, but guilt doesn't fix anything. It doesn't change the past, and it certainly doesn't make us better people. All it does is keep us stuck, replaying the same old stories in our minds and preventing us from living fully in the present. But if you could look at your past mistakes, not as failures, but as opportunities to learn, what if instead of beating yourself up for what you did or didn't do, you asked yourself, what did I learn from that experience? How did it help me grow? Because that's what mistakes are. They're not failures. They're teachers. They show us where we need to change, where we need to grow, where we need to be more mindful. One of the most powerful shifts we can make is learning to reframe our past. Instead of seeing it as something to regret, we can see it as something that helps shape who we are today. And when we do that, when we let go of the idea that we need to punish ourselves for our mistakes, we free ourselves to move forward. We free ourselves to grow. Now, that doesn't mean we forget what happened or pretend that everything was perfect. It means we accept it. We accept that we did the best we could with what we knew at the time. And when we know better, we do better. That's the essence of growth. But holding on to guilt, shame and regret doesn't make us better. It keeps us locked in a place where we're constantly looking backward rather than forward. Think about how much energy you spend holding on to the past. How many times have you replayed a conversation in your head, wishing you had said something different? How many nights have you stayed awake thinking about a decision you wish you could undo? All of that energy is being drained from your present. It's energy you could be using to create, to love, to live fully, and here's the thing, the longer we hold on to the past, the more it defines us. We start to believe that we are our mistakes. We start to think that those moments of regret are who we are rather than something we experienced. But you are not your past, you are not your mistakes. You are so much more than that. So how do we let go? 
How do we stop letting the past control us? It starts with a shift in perspective. It starts with realizing that your mistakes don't define you. Your response to them does. And the best response you can give yourself is forgiveness. Not because you're perfect, but because you're human. And being human means learning, growing. When you forgive yourself, you're not saying that the past didn't matter. And you're saying that it no longer has control over your present. You're choosing to let go of the weight that's been holding you down. And in doing so, you're freeing yourself to live more fully, more openly, more joyfully. So as we move forward, I want you to take a moment and reflect on this. What would your life look like if you stopped letting your past mistakes define you? What if instead of carrying them with you, you left them behind? What if you reframed those mistakes as valuable lessons that helped shape who you are today? Because that's the beauty of life. It's always changing, always evolving, and so are you. And when you let go of the past, when you forgive yourself, you open up a space for something new to come in. You open up a space for growth, for love, for possibility. So I invite you right now to think about the mistakes you've been holding on to. The regrets, the guilt, the things you wish you could change. And I want you to ask yourself, is holding on to these things helping me grow? Is it bringing me peace? If the answer is no, then maybe it's time to let them go. Maybe it's time to forgive yourself and make room for something new. Because your past doesn't define you. It never did. What defines you is what you choose to do in this moment right here, right now. And in this moment, you have the power to choose forgiveness, to choose love, to ch let go of the past and watch how much lighter you feel. So now we've talked about the power of letting go of the past and the weight of regret. But how do we actually begin the process of forgiving ourselves? How do we move from the concept of forgiveness to the practice of it? I think sometimes we get stuck because we don't know where to start. We hear about self-forgiveness. We know it's important, but the question remains, how? How can you start treating yourself with the same kindness you extend to others? You know how to forgive a friend. You know how to show compassion when someone else makes a mistake. So why is it so difficult when it comes to yourself? One way to start is by being intentional about your practice of self-forgiveness. And yes, it is a practice. It's not something you do once and then forget about. It's something you cultivate over time with patience and commitment, just like any other skill. One of the most powerful tools in this practice is writing. Specifically, writing a letter to yourself. Now, I know that might sound a little strange at first, writing a letter to yourself. But trust me on this. Sit down with a piece of paper and write to yourself the way you would write to someone you love. Someone who has made mistakes but deserves forgiveness. Acknowledge the things you regret, the things you're holding on to, but then speak to yourself with the same compassion you would offer a friend. So let me ask it, you defining yourself by your past mistakes or by the person you are today. Are you carrying shame for things you've done or are you willing to see yourself for who you truly are? Someone who is worthy of love, of forgiveness, of growth, you see, shame keeps us small. It holds us back from fully embracing who we are. It makes us afraid to take risks, to put ourselves out there, to pursue the things that matter to us because we're afraid of failing, of making more mistakes, of proving that voice of shame right. But here's the truth. You are not your mistakes. You are not defined by the things that went wrong. You are defined by the choices you make today, by how you choose to move forward. Forgiving yourself is about releasing both guilt and shame. It's about acknowledging that. Yes, you made mistakes, but those mistakes don't define your worth. They don't take away your value as a person. They are simply part of your story, part of your growth. And when you let go of guilt and shame, you make space for something new. You make space for healing, for joy, for peace. When you forgive yourself, you stop living in the past. You start living in the present. And from that place, you can create a future that aligns with who you truly are. You can start making decisions based on what feels right to you, not based on fear or regret. You can take risks, try new things, and even make more mistakes, knowing that those mistakes don't have the power to define you. 
Forgiveness is about freedom. It's about freeing yourself from the emotional chains that keep you stuck. It's about releasing the grip of guilt and shame so that you can step into the fullness of who you are. When you forgive yourself, you open up the possibility of deeper, more authentic relationships with others. Because when you stop judging yourself so harshly, you also stop judging others. You become more compassionate, more understanding, more accepting, not just of yourself, but of the people. So as you move forward, I want you to keep this in mind. Forgiveness is not a one-time event. It's a practice, something you return to over and over again. And every time you choose to forgive yourself, you're choosing freedom. You're choosing to stop being defined by your past and to start living fully in the present. Let go of guilt. Let go of shame. Trust that you are worthy of forgiveness, and that forgiveness will open the door to a life of greater peace, joy, and freedom. Because the truth is, you deserve it. You deserve to be free from the past, free from the way to regret. And when you embrace that freedom, you open yourself up to all the beautiful possibilities that life has to offer. How does your inability to forgive yourself affect your relationships with others? Have you ever stopped to think about that? You see, we tend to believe that our inner struggles are private, that they only affect us. But the truth is, the way we treat ourselves has a ripple effect on the way we interact with the people in our lives. If you're holding on to guilt, if you're carrying around regrets, it's going to show up in your relationships, whether you realize it or not. When you can't forgive yourself, you project those unresolved feelings onto others. You may not even be aware you're doing it, you might find yourself being more critical of others, less patient, less compassionate. You may create unnecessary conflict because deep down you're struggling with your own sense of worth. Think about the last time you were harsh with someone. Was it really about them or was it more about the frustrations you're holding on to within yourself? Self-forgiveness isn't just a gift you give yourself. It's a gift you give to the people you love. When you forgive yourself, you release all the tension, the negativity, the heaviness that you've been carrying. And when you release that weight, you show up differently in your relationships. You show up more authentically, more fully. You become someone who can love without conditions because you've learned to love yourself in that same way. There's a reason why the people who struggle to forgive themselves often struggle to forgive others. When you're hard on yourself, it's hard to extend grace to those around you. You expect perfection from yourself, so you start expecting it from others. You hold people to impossible standards because you're holding yourself to those same impossible standards. But what happens when you start to let go, when you forgive yourself, you become more accepting, more compassionate, more understanding, not just with yourself, but with everyone around you. Imagine how different your relationships could be if you could let go of your past, if you could forgive yourself for the mistakes you've made. How much more present would you be in your conversations? How much more open and loving could you be with your friends, your family, your partner? We've all experienced times when we projected our guilt onto others. Maybe you've been in a situation where you felt like someone didn't trust you, when in reality, it was you who didn't trust yourself. Maybe you've been quick to judge someone's actions because deep down you were still judging your own. This is what happens when we don't forgive ourselves. We carry that unresolved energy into every interaction, every relationship, every conversation. When you forgive yourself, you free yourself from that cycle. You stop projecting your inner turmoil onto others. You stop expecting people to meet impossible expectations. You stop needing others to validate you because you've already found that validation within yourself. And when you show up in that way, whole, at peace with who you are, you invite others to do the same. You create relationships that are built on mutual respect, love, and understanding, rather than on fear, guilt, or shame. How are you showing up in your relationships right now? Are you bringing the weight of your regrets and your guilt with you, or are you bringing the lightness of self-forgiveness? Are you expecting others to make you feel better about the mistakes you've made, or are you taking responsibility for your own healing? Self-forgiveness allows you to show up as your authentic self without the baggage of the past. When you forgive yourself, you're no longer looking to others to fix you or to make up for your perceived shortcomings. You're not holding them responsible for your happiness. Instead, you're bringing your full, healed, and authentic self 
into every interaction, and that changes everything. It changes the way you communicate. You listen more deeply without the filter of your own guilt getting in the way. You respond with kindness because you've learned to be kind to yourself. You give others the space to make mistakes because you've given yourself that same grace. You no longer feel the need to control or manipulate situations to feel good about yourself because your sense of self-worth isn't tied to external circumstances anymore. This shift, this release of guilt and regret, doesn't just affect your personal relationships. It extends into every area of your life. When you forgive yourself, you start to live more freely. You stop being afraid of making mistakes. And that opens you up to new experiences, new opportunities, new connections. You start taking risks again, not because you're trying to prove something, but because you're no longer afraid of failing. You understand that mistakes are part of the process and they don't define you. So as you move forward, I want you to really think about the relationships in your life. How are they being affected by your ability or inability to forgive yourself? Are you showing up as the person you truly want to be, or are you holding yourself back because of guilt, shame, or regret? And more importantly, what could your relationships look like if you let go of the past and stepped fully into the present? When you forgive yourself, you create the space for deeper, more meaningful connections. You create the space for love, compassion, and understanding to flow freely. And that, my friends, is the foundation of a life that's not only fulfilling, but truly aligned with who you are at your core. As we move into this next part, I want you to think about what self-forgiveness really means for your life as a whole. And because forgiving yourself isn't just about finding peace in your relationships, it's about finding peace in every area of your life. It's about stepping into the fullness of your purpose and living a life that's aligned with your true potential. And that's what we'll explore next, the broader effects of self-forgiveness on your purpose and fulfillment. Because when you forgive yourself, you open up the doors to everything life has to offer. You become free to live fully, to love deeply, and to create a life that's truly meaningful. What if every mistake you've made, every wrong turn, every failure, was actually a step toward becoming the person you're meant to be. Think about that for a moment. How would that change the way you view your life? How would that change the way you feel about the regrets you've been holding on to? So often, we get trapped in the mindset that mistakes are setbacks, that they somehow define us in a negative way. But what if that's not true? What if every single misstep, every failure, Every moment of doubt has actually been leading you toward growth, toward clarity, toward the person you're evolving into right now. Would you still hold on to your regrets so tightly if you understood that they were necessary for your transformation? You see, life isn't a straight path. It's filled with twists, turns and yes, mistakes. But those mistakes don't have to be seen as stumbling blocks. They can be stepping stones. Each mistake teaches us something. Each regret gives us insight. And each moment of uncertainty brings us closer to the, the truth of who we are. We can choose to see our mistakes as lessons rather than failures. When you embrace this perspective, everything changes. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, that sounds great, but my mistakes have caused real pain, real consequences, and I understand that. But even in those painful experiences, there's something to be learned, something to be gained, we don't have to justify or excuse our mistakes to learn from them. What we do need to do is accept them, own them, and then release them. Are you still letting your past define you? Are you still allowing those old mistakes to shape the way you see yourself today? Or can you start to see them differently? Can you start to recognize that without those experiences, you wouldn't be who you are right now? And more importantly, you wouldn't be on the path toward who you are becoming. The key to letting go of regret is to shift your perspective. Instead of seeing your past as something to be ashamed of, see it as something that has shaped you. Instead of looking at your mistakes as evidence of your shortcomings, look at them as opportunity. Every time you made a wrong decision, you learned something. Every time you stumbled, you gained the wisdom to avoid the same mistake in the future. You became stronger, more resilient, and more aware. You wouldn't have that strength that wisdom without having gone through those experiences. 
It's all part of the process of becoming who you are meant to be. But you can only step into that fully when you stop resisting your past, when you stop clinging to the idea that things should have gone differently. My sayings went the way they went. And while you may not have control over what happened in the past, you absolutely have control over how you choose to move forward. Forgiving yourself isn't just about letting go of guilt. It's about embracing the idea that everything that's happened has played a role in shaping you. It's about seeing your past not as a collection of regrets, but as a series of lessons that have led you to where you are today. And that's empowering. When you shift your perspective, when you stop looking at your mistakes as failures and start seeing them as necessary parts of your growth, you open the door to self-acceptance and peace. This shift in perspective isn't always easy. We're conditioned to believe that mistakes are bad, that failure is something to be avoided at all costs. But the reality is failure is one of the greatest teachers we have. It's through failure that we learn resilience, humility, and perseverance. It's through failure that we discover what doesn't work. And in doing so, we come closer to what does. So what if instead of fearing failure, we welcomed it? What if we saw it as a natural, necessary part of life? How different would your life be if you allowed yourself to make mistakes, knowing that they're simply part of the process of becoming who you're meant to be? Would you be kinder to yourself? Would you let go of the regrets that have been weighing you down? When you embrace this new perspective, you free yourself from the chains of your past. You stop allowing your mistakes to define you. And instead, you start defining yourself based on who you are right now and who you're becoming. You step into your power because you're no longer held back by the fear of messing up. You understand that mistakes are inevitable, but they don't determine your worth. And here's the thing. Once you've embraced this perspective, once you've made peace with your past, you realize something incredible. You realize that forgiving yourself isn't just about letting go of what you've done. It's about stepping into the fullness of who you are. It's about reclaiming your life and taking control of your future. Because when you forgive yourself, when you release the regrets and embrace the lessons, you start to live differently. You start to live with more freedom, more joy, and more purpose. So I encourage you, as we move forward together, to start seeing your past in new light. To start recognizing that everything that has happened, every mistake you've made has served a purpose. It has brought you to this moment, right here, right now, where you have the opportunity to choose how you want to move forward. Do you want to continue carrying the weight of regret? Or do you want to release it and step into the freedom that self-forgiveness offers? The choice is yours. And the power to make that choice is already within you. As we continue, let's talk about how self-forgiveness empowers you to not only accept your past, but to actively shape your future. Because when you let go of regret, you take control of your life in ways you may have never thought possible. You stop being a prisoner to your past and you start creating a future that aligns with who you truly are. As we come to the close of our discussion, let's take a moment to reflect on the essence of what we've explored together today. At the heart of our conversations has been the transformative power of self-forgiveness. We've delved into why self-forgiveness is not just a nice idea, but a crucial element of living a fulfilling authentic life. We've learned that self-forgiveness is essential because it frees us from the burden of regret that can weigh us down, holding us back from truly living in the present. By embracing self-forgiveness, we open the door to healing, self-acceptance, and personal growth. We've discussed practical steps to practice this art of forgiveness, from writing letters to ourselves, to embracing mindfulness, to having open conversations with trusted friends. Each of these actions serves as a bridge to a more compassionate relationship with ourselves. Imagine the weight. You can lift off your shoulders by allowing yourself to release the guilt and shame that may have lingered for too long. Just think about how empowering it is to know that every moment of regret can be transformed into an opportunity for learning. When we practice self-forgiveness, we are, in essence, saying, I am human. I am allowed to make mistakes, and I am worthy of love and compassion. Now let's reflect on the benefits that come with this shift. When you choose to forgive yourself, you not only liberate your mind and spirit, but you also open yourself up to experience life in a fuller, richer way. 
you become more present, more engaged, and more open to new possibilities. With the chains of regret broken, you'll find that you can embrace joy, cultivate deeper relationships, and step into your purpose with confidence. So let me ask you this. If today were your last day on this earth, would you want to spend it weighed down by regrets, or would you prefer to be free to live fully? Would you rather look back on your life and see a collection of mistakes? Or would you choose to see a beautiful tapestry woven with experiences, lessons learned, and growth achieved? The answer is clear, isn't it? We all want to live fully without the shadows of regret holding us back. Now is the time to start forgiving yourself. The best time to let go of regrets is not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. Each moment that you hold on to regret is a moment you're denying yourself the gift of life. It's a moment that could be filled with love, laughter, connection, and growth, instead of dwelling on what has already happened. You deserve to step into the fullness of who you are, free from the shackles of the past. Self-love is not just a lofty ideal. It's an essential part of your journey toward wholeness. And remember, embracing growth means acknowledging that you're on a path that will have its ups and downs. Mistakes will happen, but they don't define you. You have the power to choose how you respond to those mistakes. As you leave here today, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on what it means to let go of the past. Consider the possibility that forgiveness can be an act of love, not just for yourself, but also for those around you. When you forgive yourself, you set a powerful example for others. You show that it's okay to be imperfect, that it's okay to stumble, and that it's possible to rise again. So as you step into the next chapter of your life, I encourage you to carry this message with you. Embrace self-forgiveness. Acknowledge your past, but don't let it dictate your future. Love yourself fiercely and completely, for you are worthy of that love. Your life is precious, and the time to live it fully is now. Thank you for being here, for opening your heart and mind to the possibility of change. Together, let's move forward with courage, compassion, and a renewed commitment to living a life free of regret. You have everything you need within you to create the life you desire. Let go of the past, embrace the present, and step boldly into your future. You've got 